For the first time, COVID-19 has been instrumental in major changes in our daily lives. We were and are still working from home. We are self-isolating and we were and still are lonely. So with the loneliness, many are trying to find that new love of their lives and some are new to online dating. Today's show is about romance scams, specifically the love affair that defrauded Linda Young, $150,000 in the debilitating relationship it created between Linda and her sister, Shelley Frost. Because of this horrific time of their lives, Shelley and Linda wanted to help others. So they wrote a book. I read the book and it's called Her King, the Con, How an Online Love Affair Led to Near Disaster. The sisters wrote this book to share their story and to help others like you from falling prey to a romance scam. Ladies, welcome. So great to see you again. Hi, Elizabeth. Thanks for having us. Hi, Hi, thanks for being here. Oh, thank thank you. you. So, Linda, I'm going to begin with you. I don't want to ask you guys about what had happened because people need to read the book to be aware of what is happening. But Linda, you're an extreme nurturer. I I know you. You're a caregiver. Now, do you believe that these traits are the ones that get people in trouble with romance scammers? I really do. Um, You know, there's just this need to make people happy. And I think you're spot on, Elizabeth, because every time my scammer would ask me for money, I would just want to make him happy. And I couldn't even stand the idea that he could be upset with me or uh, be frustrated or sad. And these were all the emotions that he would pull out with me, you know, during the time when he would be asking me. And I said, no, I don't feel comfortable doing that. Oh, but this is and then, you know, really put pouring on kind of the guilt trip on me. And so, of course, I reacted by wanting to make him happy. And so sure enough, you know, I gave him the medicine, but I mean, the money. (laughs) <laughs> but I think really spot on, Elizabeth, and I, I don't think I've been asked that question before. And I think that that's a great way to kind of describe how I fell into it and how I behaved the way that I did. You know, and isn't it incredible that we work hard to get to where we are professionally and we're successful and we we all, you know, every woman suffers from the imposter syndrome and so do men as well. And it's interesting as women that we always have this fear of being homeless and broke. And even when we're well off, like there, there's always that what if, and he made you feel that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did. But he also dangled a big, huge carrot. And that was about our future, that this was all going into our future and that our future was going to be a place where our families could be together in one house, that we would have this beautiful house with a garden, you know, with our pets and with our children and our family and their children and that this was all going to be, that's what we were working so hard for. Right now we were making the sacrifice, but it was for this wonderful, you know, beautiful future in a beautiful home. And it was just painted perfectly to go right to my heart. Like that's all I've ever wanted. So it went right to your heart. And, and as love does, I mean, who doesn't want to be loved? Like, what are the red flags and, and why did you end up ignoring them? Well, I think that's a, so Part of the reason I ignored them was because of the emotional state that I was in that I really wasn't even aware of. And so one of the things that I would like to say is that after my 24 24 year marriage ended, you know, everybody was telling me, oh, my gosh, you need to be out of this marriage. It's the best thing that you could have done. And of course, I'm thinking, well, yeah, that's the best thing I could have done, except that I was super, super vulnerable and I didn't realize it. I just didn't. Going through a divorce is very overwhelming. And then once I got through it and I was back living on my own, I was very lonely, but I wouldn't admit that to myself because that to me would be a sense of, of um, weakness. And so um, everything was hard. I was working a lot. I had a very big job. It was a lot of responsibility. And here was this wonderful morning phone call that I got this wonderful, you know, fantasy and attention that I could have on my way as I was driving into work every morning. And it was like the one nice, wonderful thing that was going on in my life at the time. And I didn't want to give it up. You know, I knew it wasn't right, but it was the one thing that I, you know, made me feel good, made me feel like special, made me just feel really attended. Thank you so much, uh, Linda.
We're discussing romance scams and the red flags to look out for to protect yourself. I'm joined by Shelly and Linda. Now, Shelly, I'm going to begin with you right now. Um, you know, you were concerned about Linda and asked her whether she did a background check on Scott. I don't think a lot of people do background checks before they start dating someone. So why were you concerned? I just felt that this was all happening too fast. The stories she was telling us about him and how quickly they fell in love with each other, um, the pet names they were calling each other within two weeks and the plans that they were making. I just felt like this is not sounding right to me. So I just asked her, did you Google him? Did you look him up? And and she assured me, oh, yes, I, I Googled him. I looked him up. On reflection now, I'm wondering if she was maybe hedging the truth a little bit. So that was. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I, I wanted to dive in to try to figure this all out. So before I ask you another question, Shelley, I want to ask you, Linda, I've seen so many different shows where scammers will say, you know, you're my queen, you're my wife, but they never really call you by your first name, do they? No. Yeah, I was a queen and he was the king. And that's, you know, the name of our book, Her King the Con. Um, but at the time, you know, there's a lot more information that has come out since I was scammed. Um, I had no idea, no clue in the world that they used this ruse of king and queen so that they didn't have to remember every person, every woman's name that they might be talking to. Now, Shelley, when did you think that Scott was a scammer? I thought um, we, I was getting input from other people who Linda knows and everybody was agreeing, this is not right. This is looking very shady. So I think because all of us were on the same page, her friends, her uh, closest relatives, that yeah, we realized pretty soon that this was not gonna end well. But in the back of my mind, after every story Linda told me about him, I wanted it to be real. I wanted it to be true for her too. So I think I was the, the last one of the group to really come kicking and screaming that we had to do something about this when that's when we got serious and we hired a private investigator and so on and so forth. Well, of course you want it to be real. She's your sister. And yeah. you, you want, you know, your sister, your friend. I mean, we all want to be happy for people that are close to us because we want them to be happy as well. Now, I'm going to talk to you about the private investigator. But first, Linda, I want to ask you, um, you know, you were becoming brainwashed. Like, when did this begin and how helpless did you feel? Um, you know, and, and how did you realize you were brainwashed as well? Well, I'll tell you, um, it was quite a revelation when I did finally realize, because first of all, you ha I had to acknowledge before anything could happen that, in fact, this was not real. And then after that processing and then just, you know, reflecting and looking at back at what had happened to me, that's when the realization of how brainwashed I was. And that's when I realized, too, how good they were. They were really, really good. The only thing I would say, Elizabeth, that I think looking back that I learned from is that when you set up your profile, your dating profile, mm -hmm. to keep information at a minimum. I put my whole life out there, everything that I felt, what I wanted. And so all they had to do is just come along and go, oh, bing, bing, bing. Okay, perfect. Here you go. So they're very, very good at what they do. Um, and even if you're the smartest woman in the world, which I'm not claiming to be by any means, but even, you know, of average intelligence, they were really good at what they did. You know, Linda, you, you touch about something that, that's really important. There's, there's two things here. Number one, it doesn't matter how smart you are. It's actually how distracted you are. Um, you know, people don't realize that when you're distracted, this is when you become like a, a full on victim. But you kept saying the word they, they, they. It's not just one person that you're dealing with. Oh. No, not at all. And that's why I say the sophistication level of this group that got me, I know that there were people that were um, priming him, that were, um, you know, that had supervising mental- Supervising him. They were supervising yes, it, him. Definitely supervising. And he also had to come up with a certain amount of money. He He had expectations on his end that he needed to get from me to pay the boss. Let's, so he had a know. quota per day? Yes, he had a quota. Yes, definitely. And he had a timeline. And so that's when a lot of the pressure would come in when he would really start because I would say, no, 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 I'm not comfortable doing that. Oh, but you know, and, and that's when the pressure would come in. 
And um, he told me a little bit about it at, at the very end. I think you know that in the book, Elizabeth, um, I did talk to my scammer um, months later when he told me a lot of what you know he had gone through on his end. And so that is one of the things that he told me is that he was part of a group. Interesting. We are going to take a short break, but Shelly, I want to talk to you about the private investigator and, and how you knew and how does somebody go about helping someone who's in a romance scam? We're discussing romance scams and the red flags to look out for to protect yourself. Now, Shelley, I was going to ask you, you had talked about a private investigator. Uh, so how did that come about and how did you know to start looking for a private investigator? We had started to do quite a bit of research on our own, diving into Facebook, putting Google, putting the images into Google image of the guy because Linda had shared some of the photos with us. But we really were having a hard time figuring out if this guy was real or not. I mean, every time we did that, we'd, we'd find somebody with the same name as the um, guy that Linda was seeing, mm -hmm. but it just didn't ever seem to pan out. So I said, let's find a private investigator. Luckily for me, um, a fellow lived right down the street from me and that's his business. And so we went ahead and he did a whole report on the name and the birth date that we were given by Linda. I don't want to disclose the name because it proved to be a true person, a real person whose identity was stolen. So that's why I'm not saying his name, but um, the reports would come back. And again, a lot of dead ends because the scammer was so brilliant and so sophisticated that we could not zero in on exactly where he was or who he was. So how did you actually pinpoint it and find out that, you know, it was a scammer and this person's identity had been stolen? Because I noticed a t-shirt that he was wearing in one of the photos had a logo of a gym in LA. And so I called the gym. I thought, well, maybe this guy's down there. And they said, yeah, as a matter of fact, he's the manager. And so this was late at one evening. So I thought, okay, the next day I'll call and really talk to him in person. And that's how we found out that the man was a real person and he was a manager of a gym in LA and his identity on Instagram had been stolen by the scammer. So after that, I, I went through his entire Instagram profile and I found all these familiar photos that I've seen of Linda's guy, the king, right there in this Instagram profile. So then I knew I could do an intervention with Linda. I could finally pull her out of the brainwash because I had solid proof that um, it was a scam. However, you had solid proof, but Linda was in love. So how did that mm -hmm. go when you actually told her that this, this person that she's in love with, the person that she wants to spend the rest of her life with is a scammer? Elizabeth, the day that my mother and my stepfather drove to Linda's house, we did we did a surprise visit. But driving there, I, I could feel my heart breaking because I knew this was going to be a horribly difficult moment in her life because I knew how deep down she was, how deeply in love she was. My mother and I both were nervous wrecks because we didn't want her to be in pain. My father, my stepdad went to the front door. We waited in the car and he told Linda, we have something serious to talk to you about. And we went in mm -hmm. with a lot of love, a lot of tears and showed Linda the Instagram account. And as heartbreaking as it was for all of us, it was also a huge relief because I could see that my sister returned to us as she sat there. Yes, you were crying, mm -hmm. Linda. Of so course. it was, awful, but I could feel her coming back to us. So it was truly a, a revelationary type of moment. So Linda, your heart was broken. I, I, I don't even know what you went through, but you're also an empath. Like, why is this bad when it comes to scammers? Well, first of all, there was a part of me that was really relieved um, that it was finally coming to, you know, for, I mean, it was coming out, like the truth was out. It was over. Um, no more trying to hide. And and I am not a liar, but I was even saying things that it, are not like me just to cover this up because it was then that kind of some of those feelings of humiliation started to come through and shame and embarrassment. And so, yeah, I was relieved when they finally kind of confronted me. And in fact, I had been on the phone with him just before they came over. 
Um, so I immediately blocked his number. And like I said, it was a relief. This It was finally over. It was out in the open. The secret was, was there. And as an empath, um, I think what affected me most is uh, I felt bad for myself. You know, I felt really sad for myself. It was really a lot to go through. And I felt like all I wanted was just to be loved. And it cost me a lot of money <laughs> to to have somebody, you know, feel that way about me, or at least, you know, pretend to feel that way about me. So all I can say uh, to any women that are out there, don't, don't worry if you've gone through something like this, what you need to do is give yourself grace. You know, give yourself grace and don't be ashamed, I think are two really important things for people to understand when they have been victims of, of scams. We will be right back with more of the romance scam story when we return. Now, Linda, I'm just going to read, a, and Shelly as well, I'm going to read a piece of from the book. And it's fascinating to me. It basically says a scammer is like an abstract piece and your brain fills in the blanks. Um, I was reading all the things that he professed to you. You are my beginning and my end. You are my joy and treasure. Linda, you are what I live for. You are my life, my world. My life revolves around you. And when the day comes that we stand before God, I will consecrate my faith, my love, my life to you. Holy smokes. Mm -hmm. I, I've never had a man say these things to me. <laughs> like, I, of course, it'll be addictive, but it doesn't, it doesn't sound normal. But I guess your brain must have been filling in the blanks for you. Yeah, I think it is. There were, I had a lot of blanks to fill, Elizabeth. <laughs> I come out of like a 24 year, very unloving marriage and uh, without a lot of attention, you know, vice versa in, in the relationship. Wow, was this ever great, you know, to hear somebody speak to me like that? And it wasn't even just that, but it was the text messages throughout the day. Hey, Queen, just thinking about you, thinking about our futures together while I was at work and in really, you know, hard situations at work. And I would get these texts and it was like build up everything. Yes, it did. Now, Linda, scammers typically ask for money for medical emergencies or to purchase a flight to see you. Um, what did he ask for from you in particular? Well, in my case, um, it all kind of started with him supposedly being on a trip to Cuba. And in Cuba, he explained to me um, that he was looking for land in order to open like a resort kind of a thing. And that there was a lot of competition at the time from other international buyers. And so this was our opportunity. He knew somebody on the island that knew um, like leaders in the government, you know, that could open doors for us. Mm -hmm. And that he also had a villa. And so there was film of him at the villa describing what it looked like. And that really sold me when I got that that film. Um, my sister was later able to kind of explain how that could be fabricated. But to me, I thought that was, well, that's it. He's real. But he was asking her for Apple products that he could use as bribes yes. to get the building contracts that he needed and the permits that he needed to put this villa together. So it started with her sending all these Apple products. Mm -hmm. So Shelly, mm -hmm. I, I'm just going to ask you a question here. We've got about a minute 10 left, uh, but I want to bring out what red flags did you see that Linda didn't see? What did you see that, that alerted you? And, and what can you say to people so that they don't become a victim of a romance scam? The biggest red flag was that they were not seeing each other eye to eye on a FaceTime call, a Skype call, a Zoom call, nothing. They never did that. All they did was talk on the phone or text and trade pictures and trade videos. But he never once would, as much as she tried to FaceTime with him. In fact, one time I got, I convinced her that I wanted to FaceTime him with her to make her feel more comfortable. I think Linda mm -hmm. was probably a little nervous to see him face to face, but uh, even that was kiboshed. He wouldn't do it. And I mean, right there, I mean, if there's not a bigger red flag than that, 
that he would not FaceTime, show his face, then what is there? So that, that was bad. So ladies, thank you so much for, for sharing your story. And I know that when people hear what you've had to say, it'll really help them a lot. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Elizabeth. Happy to be here. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for sharing our story. Um, and we hope to help other people. That's all we've ever wanted. All right. Take care, ladies. I'd like to thank Shelley Frost and Linda Young for joining me and sharing this incredible experience in hopes of helping you from becoming a romance scam victim. As Linda says, if you cannot meet in person, do not pursue the relationship. If you cannot talk face to face on the phone or computer, run for the hills. And if you're questioning the validity of an online relationship, reach out for help. Pay attention to red flags and never stay silent. Now, if you've been scammed, contact your local police department and the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre. If you send money to the scammer, also contact your financial institution. If you've been scammed once, beware. The scammer will try and scam you again. The second time, they'll tell you that they're trying to help you get your money back. I'm Elizabeth Namofsky, and I'm trying to empower you and make frugality fashionable. Bye for now. 